Okay. Um, hi, guys. Um, the last time I was here, uh, a couple of months ago, I talked about my master uh, thesis on neural evolution. Neural network is involved in deep neural networks with genetic and algorithms. And I defended my thesis, and here I am again. I don't know, for my fourth time here in the paper club. And today I decided to talk about something that is becoming really common in machine learning in general. With it is starting to, to, to be like, uh, not exactly in the underground community of machine learning, but it's, but it's starting to get a mainstream attention. That is starting a talk about discriminatory uh, machine learning models. And I will try to talk about it and uh, this idea of this paper. Why is my my, my classified uh, discriminatory? But also how we can get the statistical ideas of getting this discrimination yeah, to our problems here at Cloud Walk or even in a fintech ecosystem in a sense. Uh, just a little a little um, a little overview of my own past because this paper of course talks about uh, discrimination um, in healthcare problems, healthcare data sets. Um, on my, uh, during college, my, my, my final project was working with tuberculosis. I worked with tuberculosis, trying to diagnose tuberculosis on X-ray images, especially um, on the on front parts of the body. And for example, in Brazil, we have very uh, different statistics about tuberculosis depending on race, of course, race and gender, but especially race here, for example, and white people or even black people, they have more, they have three more times or they are more three times prone to, to have tuberculosis than the white people. Or even uh, people in prison, they have more more than 30 times uh, the probability of having tuberculosis and the other the other type of people. But of course, those problems are related to the social structures of, of, of our society. However, uh, one thing that we start to see it is about the same time that we look at the data, we see the statistics of the problems, um, especially when machine learning starts, it starts to be like main, starts to get uh, mainstream attention. Um, we have this idea of okay, uh, we have these problems in our society, but we don't have those problems in our machine learning models because the models they don't have bias, they don't have. Uh, they can be discriminatory they they can be they cannot act um, with prejudice to us another people another person and for example we have the, this this problem a couple of years ago at least uh, many years ago we have this model of the um the apple watch uh, apple created the apple watch i don't remember the version of the apple watch itself uh okay but Apple launched the, this new version of the Apple Watch, and in the first week the Apple Watch got launched, people started to hijack Apple Watch because it simply did not work the light um, on black people, only work with, with white people. So, um, And we can say, okay, the Apple Watch is racist, the, the Apple Watch is discriminatory, but it is very important for us not to be like, not forget who built the board, who, who built the algorithm, who built uh, all the stuff that we that we see today. And the same thing can be applied, for example, in ChatGPT, for example. We have this many threads in Twitter showing the flaws in ChatGPT, for example. Flaws in, let's say, in the, in, when we talk about the discrimination prejudice in a way. For example, we ask for ChatGPT, okay, he lists me 20 philosophers and he lists like, 20 uh, European philosophers, especially 20 Greek philosophers. And okay, why why you didn't why you didn't suggest me any, I don't know, Asian philosopher? Oh, I'm sorry. And he goes like uh, 10, 10 European and Asian philosophers. Okay, why you didn't say any black philosopher? Why you didn't say any uh, African philosopher? Why you didn't say any woman philosopher? Only male only philosopher. So when we start to, to think about the, the, those ideas, and and we get the concept of oh the algorithms that we have today are built they are built by people uh, so we have to think all the way about how we extract the data how we analyze the data how we translate the data in a way about the hypothesis in the in the, in the statistical universe and then to build and to model our machine learning models to deploy it 
And the idea of this paper, it is to try to understand the parts of the, how our classifier, any classifier, could be discriminatory and how we, we may tackle with some practical ideas. So, so this paper here is especially from Professor, Professor Santek from MIT, um, but is mainly developed by his at the time PhD candidate, Irene Shen. And she at the time, uh, and the paper came out in 2018, she was a PhD candidate uh, MIT, and now she's a STEM professor at Berkeley, so I'm very happy for her. And they wrote this paper, again, why, my, why is my classifier discriminatory? Because they have an entire lab in MIT, in Harvard, in the, the, the top university in America, um, especially for healthcare problems. So, of course, they have many hospitals in Boston, Massachusetts, and they can have the top data sets in the world to tackle the problems in healthcare. And in the paper, in the paper, they they tell the, the a very simple story. We had we had a problem in healthcare. We train a machine learning model, and then we discovered suddenly that the model was like and had different accuracy levels or any kind of metric. Let's say um, accuracy, precision, recall, or any other type of of, of metric. It was different and among the the races of the patients and. Here they have the Asian, the Black, Hispanic, other, and the and white patients. And okay, we, we have this problem, so maybe we need to talk about how we can mitigate this problem of the of the model being discriminatory, and is starting is start to see how we can apply it some statistics to try to minimize this discrimination of the model. Uh, that is not a uh, of course, that is not exactly a new idea. Um, I did a quick search here. If I talk about discrimination machine learning, you have tons of paper, like tons and tons of paper talking about non-discrimination machine learning, fair machine learning, and fairness in machine learning, and so on. But again, that is a top that, that is not exactly new, but it started to get, again, mainstream attention. But you have papers like 30 years ago talking about it. Um, and they have this idea about summary, uh, about summarizing uh, discrimination in one formula, and then trying to break this formula in into three different pieces, and then with the those three values of discrimination, parts of discrimination, uh, we may talk, we may tackle the, the problem. Okay, and another 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 simple example to explain how this problem is very important for us, especially in our society. Um, for example, in I, I I have the numbers for the American society. I, I tried to get the numbers for uh, in Brazil, especially, but I couldn't get the numbers. But for example, um, we have many studies in the past five years saying that the healthcare. For example, we we have two different um, patients coming in the same hospital in the same time. We have a black one and a white one, and and many hospitals they deal with the idea of treating treating the patient according to the features that the patient had, the problem, the age, the gender, the race, and of course there are there are already some algorithms running in, in a couple of hospitals in America they, that that try to predict how much. Uh, the patient is going to cost the hospital, and basically the 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 algorithm says that in a, let's say in the majority white people they will need the the hospital will need to uh, pay more for the white people than for the black people, in, and then they just focus more on the white people because the white people will pay more. So that is in a way how the algorithm can be like biased. But again, I, I, that is really important. Uh, we can say the algorithm biased, but again, the algorithm, the algorithm was built by someone. Uh, okay, so we have this problem. We have this problem in the algorithm. The algorithm has different accuracy so, or different different metric values depending on the on the on the race or, or the class itself. It, not the class, but especially the the gender. For example, let's say you want to predict. Uh, in how many years a, a person is going to die, if he, do they have cancer or not, or if they're going to apply this this treatment A or treatment B, uh, what is the probability of success of the surgery of a patient. So, okay, we have the classifier, 
uh, especially in a classical scenario that is a, a binary classification zero or one fail or success and then inside the, the the class we have the i'm sorry inside the category of the page we have the classes and, and then we can think about race gender age job and we can explore that as our wish so basically they come up with an idea of defined fairness or define let's say at the same time fairness but also discrimination of course a higher a higher fairness is a low discrimination and the inverse is also true so a higher uh, discrimination means a low fairness in, in the in the model and the, again that is also not a, a new idea they they not exactly copy it, um, but they, they got very heavily inspired by Pedro Domingos' paper from 2000. Again, like 2000, um, Pedro Domingos in the ACM, that is a machine learning uh, symposium, and uh, create this idea of a unified bias variance decomposition. So, taking how how my model is doing wrong in in, in my samples, how I can uh, how I can sample it uh, between bias and variance. And they added just a new, a new. Uh, I think this is better. They just added a new concept of this idea of breaking the the discrimination between. Uh, instead of using all the bias and variance, they oh maybe there are some things uh, in your data set that the model can simply not tackle it, and and that is the noise. That is something that is not a function created by the model itself or or something that just is simply unpredictable um, from the data that, that we got so they just added the noise but the but idea of the paper it is very simple just to show that we can break how our model are doing predictions break into noise bias and variance and then we may talk of depending how are the levels of those three metrics um, of the model among the, the categories that we have yeah, example here again, we, we can may think about race, but any other category is welcome here. So, uh, considering the first theorem they have, like breaking the, the idea of discrimination, try to quantify uh, or even have a number for, for, for discrimination, it is basically the idea about how much our model are doing wrong uh, among the categories I have. So, for example, if our, if our model are doing are getting more better results, uh, higher accuracy um, between white people than black people. That is example of discrimination of the model. But uh, but again, you can think, for example, age, race, and so on. Okay, and they can break the the uh, the discrimination in bias, variance, and noise. And basically, we have this big gamma and the and the and this. Oh, how I can say that in English. Guys, how I can say is it trasso? I don't remember the word in English. The dash. dash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's okay. The dash. Um, it's not not a hat, but okay. Uh, the bar. Okay, Jessica. Thank you. The bar. Uh, and the bar. The bar of, of the variables here. Thank you, Jessica. Um, it is subsample. So if we subsample of data, we have this, and the data. Uh, Divided into increments of the sample. So in a subsample, uh, we can measure bias and various and noise. We have this big gamma to to hold to summarize all the variance between two between two between two um, two categories in, in the example here. So we have bias, we have the variance, and have the noise. So to think about in a applicable way. In a sense, for example, let's say we have this distribution here, we have the blue dots and the orange dots, and then we can plot a model, for example. We can we can tune a model for this data. And how the orange dots, as uh, uh, they are very underrepresented, we have very, very, very few of the small dots. Um, it's very hard to, to fit only, only one model, for example. Maybe here we can fit two models uh, of, for the, for the, for these, that are set here. So we have those black dots here. And when we see, for example, the true data function, it, it is kind of weird to see it. But for example, if I have this data function created 
this type of distributions, maybe the maybe my problem in the end is due to variance. So maybe adding more samples to my model to understand the true data function would be helpful here. So okay, that is a very a no brainer uh, uh, thing, but that is where the paper gets the discrepancy get the difference between virus and, and bias here. So how they, again, how the are very underrepresented, maybe adding more simple, collecting more data, uh, we can find it through a model to get the difference between between the, the between the dots. However, let, let's think about like uh, another case like here. Oh, okay, we have, uh, an, I think there are 23, um, orange dots and 23 blue dots. We, we have the same uh, count for, for those two colors of dots. However, it is clear, for example, that maybe, um, okay, that maybe the orange dot, they they obey a product, a quadratic function and the blue dots obey a linear distribution function. So maybe here, um, adding, adding more values, we will, not have, uh, we will not have my model to distinguish between those two guys. So instead of feeding only one model to try to see the difference between the, those two type of color points, would not be helpful to hear because every time I, I can feed a model, I can feed a linear, for example, a linear, a linear model here, and the error between the orange dot and blue dot for the model that I fitted would would not be good enough never. So instead here, I, I can make change the, the model. I'm sorry, I can change the class of the model. So now the model is going to see now those guys are the and uh, those guys are different guys the origin the are not are, are indeed very different guys so maybe my model can try to predict uh two classes instead of one for example um so here uh, of, of course it is easy to see when you have different colors but again if you're all only gray uh it is easy now to understand so, okay uh those are different those are totally two different types of distributions, one quadratic function and one linear function. So they have the idea of, okay, that is bias. And to solve bias, the problem of bias in your distribution, in your classification, you need to change the class of the of your model. And then uh, we have the final problem. And that is, we can, we can have the same, that we can have the same type of distribution, for example, an inner distribution here. We can have the same number of, of, of samples for each of for its dots, the origin of the orange dots and the blue dots. Um, and they seem, for example, they seem to overlap. They have like a ton, a ton, a ton of noise. So they create this idea of noise. It is very impossible to distinguish between um, those two classes with one classifier, two classifiers, three classifiers, uh, with the amount of samples that I have, especially the the features that I selected. Uh, the maybe if I add more features, which means if I add if I add more dim dimensions to my problem, maybe I can fit a multidimensional model to this multidimensional data uh, to get better understanding of what is going on, and then. I can try to predict better and get better results from, from the distribution that I have. And again, noise is something that is not uh, coming from the model, is not coming from, from the hyperparameters that I choose. Noise is coming especially from the samples that I have, something that is totally unpredictable. Uh, it could be like from data collection, can be from a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of places that I cannot control of. So they say, oh, maybe if our model, if our model has a, a high level of noise, adding more feature would be helpful here. And and if if we think about those three main ideas about adding more features, adding change the, the the class of the model, and adding more samples, those are those three are very simple ideas that we do on a daily basis when we model machine learning models. Like it's like it's kind of obvious, kind of do to think about it. But the thing is, it is not about doing the stuff itself. It is about choosing one of one of those things to minimize the discrimination of the model among the categories that I have. 
So it's not a, it's not a, it's not not exactly doing for doing so because uh, what what it is important here is not only to one metric but it's the metrics it is the metrics relations between all the categories that I have for example again and uh, trying to predict it on how many years a black person is going to live and how many years a white a white person is going to to live is a very very important problem that we need to talk about and not summarize like one of oh no my my model uh, and that is, for example, uh, uh, something that we have when we choose, for example, a chorus. Uh, we look only for a chorus in our machine learning models. If we have a very unbalanced data set, like we have in, in fraud and the kind of in the kind of, of problems, if we look only for a chorus, only for one simple or one simple metric. Oh, that is uh, this is going to be a total mess. Um, the especially on a daily basis in the operation is going to be a total mess if you look on the for because we can have a course like for nine point for and have a, a, a very bad model because the model is going to say oh no that is that is a, a, a non fraud because just because i have a very low uh examples of those guys so knowing exactly where is the problem of the categories between my model i can tackle um a, a mom especially so noise i add more features so bias i change the class of the model and the variance i add more simple and i i summarize the, the main the main idea of the model uh, and the main idea of the paper so i try to, to write here to get from the same and i i brought some examples they put on in the end of the paper especially in the appendix uh, to show the idea so and just summarize the, the the main the main concepts of the paper. We have this idea of the big Y. Um, we can calculate discrimination. So if you have if you have big Y close to zero, equal to zero, it means that the discrimination between let's say um, uh, gamma zero and gamma one that is like zero is it is one category and one is another category. Um, for my paper, I'm sorry, for my problem, if they are equal, um, the discrimination, the, the big gamma is going to be zero. So uh, if they are equal, there is no discrimination. So considering that it is impossible, I mean, like, it's like, like impossible to have a model that has uh, the best metrics for for, for my problem uh, is, is basically impossible. Considering the noise that exists in almost every data set, um, especially real, real uh, data sets, uh, we will never have discrimination, um, the big Y here, the discrimination pool, uh, exactly zero, but maybe can be close to zero, so, okay. Again, we have the decomposition of, of the sources or, or breaking the noise bias and variance. And then they, they brought us some examples um, here. So what I really want to show it is that guy here, that is a, a, type, a type learning, a a type, a type two learning curve. Well, we know the, the type one learning curve, for example, when we train especially uh, neural networks, the y-axis is the, the metric is I'm visualizing from the loss, the accuracy, any other metric. And uh, it's basically how well my water is doing with my data in the x-axis in the type one learning curve. It is um the amount of epochs or amount of, or amount of time or iterations that i put my my, my machine model on and the type 2 learning curve uh, we substitute the x-axis of the epochs or of the amount of time that i'm running and with the sub samples of data so again with the the bar that, that we say the bar that we said here is about the samples of the model so like they said oh maybe okay i have the the discrepancy of, of the model Okay, but maybe what if I I I just feed my data with like one percent of the data, and then I I increment, uh, I, I do like a ton, a tons of runs, and each in each run I put just a little bit of data, and how is going to be the discrepancy between the discrimination of the model? So that is the type two and equal here. So the x x is just adding more data. So again, we can see that. Between the between the races, they put the black, the Asian, the white, and so on. The discrepancy among the categories are getting low. Okay, I add more data, uh, and that is nice. However, we see that even even doing even doing like that. Let me see if the black 
Okay, the black hair is really long. Okay, even, even with that, we see difference between all the categories. So adding more data is not going to put discrimination back to zero, but it's going to slow discrimination among, among the classes. I'm sorry, among the categories of, of my data set. So that is very important. If there's are more data, I'm going to get lower discrimination, but I'm going, um, it, it doesn't mean zero discrimination. And they even put another example, like here. Um, let me see, let me show you guys. This is in the appendix. Uh, okay, they they add this, this example here um, from adding training data size on error enrichment for cancer, topic 48. And adding more data, I can I can lower the discrimination for some categories, but not for all the categories. For example, the the category that is the blue ones, and I think the blue zone, uh, yeah, the blue one are the Asians. That is, it happens something that here I went and add a, a portion of the data that I just get bigger and bigger discrimination for Asian people. So and, and again, that is coming exactly from the noise, something that. Uh, maybe I can have the data, but the data, they are simple, um, in, they are retrieved, get it, and in different dates uh, from different people, and different people make different notations, and so on and so on. Something that we cannot control, something that is not a function of the model. So that is a counterexample, they even put the model. Um, and another practical, practical example here, um, adding again more training data size here. Uh, they feed a decision tree, a random forest, and a region regression, and uh, showing that adding and uh, changing the class, the, the, the class of the class of the model. So, for example, they, they instead of trying to fit one model to get the data, they created three different um, uh, models, and each model has his own, his own classes here. So we have the group zero, the group one, and it just fit the it fit the data because it just make sense and doing like this instead of like trying to binding all features and categories uh, to one machine learning model and, and book reviews again they they i, I just put the, these, these images because it says again what i, I just said uh, adding more uh, training training data reduce discrimination between the categories but they say here but maintains difference between groups so that is something very important uh, to have in mind. Is we are not going to get um, zero discrimination, just adding more data. Okay. And just for fun, I, I tried to put an example here um, of the paper to calculate the, this, this value of big gamma, the, the main, um, that is the discrimination. And instead of trying to break into different things, I just calculated the discrimination, how they, how they put it in the paper. And that is basically, for example, we choose something that we want to, to metrify or we choose a metric um, or some value that shows how the model is going doing wrong. And then we think, especially with the loss, something like uh, false positives, false true negatives, and so on, something the model is saying uh, and, and that is wrong. And here uh, I just created um, uh, a linear distribution here, and I added in in the f function here that creates my data. I added uh, a noise and or or 0 0.05, and the g function here I I just added uh, one in noise, and then you can say um, the the red dots are the group one created by the the g distribution, and and the blue dots are like the guys with minimal uh, uh, noise so they obey almost like a perfect uh, linear distribution so we have two different categories here let's say the, the red dots and the blue dots and if you fit a model i i just call it linear regression from uh, scikit to learn here to show it okay we, we fit the model and it's time to predict and how to calculate discrimination is very simple i i basically get um the y hat um the predict um uh what i'm going to predict between what what is um, my true label and uh, the ground truth here and i subtract and i get the mean it's basically that the, the, the formula and i have the error for my my zero class and i do that exactly thing again uh, of my arrow one for my my um, red dot plus 
and I have the discrimination between those two groups. So I have the error for zero, the error for one. I had I get the, the absolute value between those two errors of attraction, and I have this value for discrimination. And then, of course, there is a very silly idea, but it's exactly like the limitation and just a simple implementation of the paper. And uh, what if we add uh, multidimensional data? Because here, uh, as we have a simple linear attribution, I just added one one feature. So, and I use, for example, um, a binomial distribution to create the, the randomly create uh, the classes for me. And let's say you have a data like we deal on a daily basis with two two hundred features and ten, uh, a thousand a thousand a thousand samples. Um, and instead of using a linear attribution, maybe you can create a, quad, a quadratic um, distribution of my data. Again, just putting um, 0 0.5 here as the noise, one for the noise here. And now, of course, our data is like multi dimensions. It is impossible to see it. But I, I just plot here, uh, for example, one feature here, another feature here, another feature here. So looking looking uh, one feature uh, in those two categories, like I, I think I, yeah, I put I put five features here and mock it by mock by mock it here. It is like impossible for the model, uh, at least for us to, to distinguish between the red dots and the blue dots. So that is like a, a very daily example of what we do here at CloudWalk or even in other companies, like how we are going to, to predict the classes and how we are going to distinguish between the classes. Okay, but maybe we can, we can start by trying to see how much the difference between those two classes when I when I apply my model and when I ask for the inference for my model. So uh, again, I, now I use a random forest. I use a more robust model for it. Again, get why I had the prediction of the model. Um, I uh, get the, the value for discrimination for the category zero, the category one. And here I can show, for example, the discrimination between the two categories like 2.24. So I, I did some ad hoc examples of some ad hoc tries with different values of, of features which, and different values of distributions. And I get the sense, for example, using this method, uh, using more features, of course, and uh, the value for discrimination is going to be very high. Um, so maybe um, that is something. So, for example, here uh, maybe we have different like uh, different and um, guys doing transactions and bring the idea for a daily basis analysis and have categories of business categories for merchants. Maybe you can think that about not only looking for one value of accuracy of a metric, but maybe looking, for example, the KNI, the MCSA, that kind of stuff, looking how the model, uh, how it is the discrimination of the model between the categories that we deal. Maybe uh, we can we can decide the best, um, the best idea to put maybe uh, to add more features, to reduce the noise, maybe to train the, the category of the, I'm sorry, in the class of the model, instead of trying to fit all the guys in one go on the one model um, per class, or even uh, one model per, uh, I don't know, X percent of classes, or even uh, just adding more simple. Of course, that is the, the, main, the main thing that we always uh, sometimes, uh, not, all, not always, but I don't know, sometimes you know, we just think about adding more simples, adding more simples in, in adding more features. And just to finish, um, if you guys, I don't know, want to, to study more about it, of course, we have many statistical ideas, uh, very good statistical ideas from, from the universe of, of the healthcare data sets. I think that the first time, or the, I'm sorry, the second time I was here in the paper club, I talk about um, counterfactuals from, from the universe, uh, from this universe of healthcare and stats, especially from... Uh, Oh, I forgot the name of the field now. Oh, from casual machine learning, casual inference. I have this link here of the DX machine learning for of cats talk uh, taught by Professor Sontang from from the paper. I highly recommend uh, his materials. Um, I think that's it, guys. If you guys want to talk something, bring in ideas, um, I'm totally open. really really nice lucas nice presentation uh so does anyone have any comments or for lucas
I, I have a comment, but I don't know if it's, if it's for Lucas or for everyone. But uh, when Lucas was saying that the the about Apple Watch and he was built by people, you guys hear me? Hello, hello, hello. I I don't I I remember um uh a present a presentation that I see recently about uh, diversity and inclusion and uh I was thinking uh, different per persons uh, build different things and when we when we quando a gente concentra sorry guys when we focus yeah but uh a lot of black a, a lot of white guys build a uh, apple watch for example and they don't think uh about the the other perspective of other people and the same thing it's applying to this you know can you guys understand me yes hello hello Yes, I think so. Um, and basically, it is the idea of building something and not think about the people that are going to use it. Yeah. And the same thing, for example, fa uh, facial recognition on machine learning models. Uh, it's very hard. Uh, like people, people just say, for example, it's very hard to, to detect um, and black people uh, with certain light conditions and so on and so on. And and we we just stay with this visual cycle. Oh, no, it is very hard, and the, uh, it is the, just the algorithm that I, I I'm using is very impossible to 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 understand. So we need to break this barrier of oh no, it's just how how the things are and so on and so on. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's your paper is really interesting because they try like this to break down right. You have the bias, you have the the variance associated with this this different. Uh, classes right because i think that's like uh i don't know i remember i i read like uh some tweets about uh you know like uh, this discrimination and stuff like that and i like uh and i think it was like not very you know technical people and then they they're very quick to say like oh this model is racist or this thing is racist uh and, and like uh when a lot of the things is like the data, of course, you have to consider like the guys that are using your the things, but uh, you know there is the, the the issue of the data, right? So maybe this is a thing that we we need to to analyze. The people need to analyze, right? Because they just go to the majority. And it's not that something is inherently racist, right? I think uh, I don't know. I, it's just the thing that I really bothers me. Like, like oh, well, this just uh, these guys, and they don't think about. Uh, insert minority groups is is not it's not a simple problem right because you have us to be general general right and i think another thing that uh to me i think it's very interesting is that how they they analyze the error right for each type of of group because uh, to me it kind of reminded uh, i I, re I reminded me of uh you know when you're analyzing uh linear regression models right simpler models that you want things that you try to to see if the model fits because they have the also the assumption that's kind of similar right that the noise uh in the y hat equals the 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 model the result from your data plus um, some associated noise uh and then like you have one the, the test that you you check is like the almost almost elasticity right if the errors the residuals of your feed they are normally distributed, right? So you don't overshoot too much or you undershoot any other types of data, right? So it's, it's something that you see on your model. And I think it's something that maybe you could also try to see by the groups, right? Not only by the residual, all the residuals, but for these groups, right? So I think that's like the example that uh, you showed, right? That one model, it's like, it's a linear feed in one, one type of data, but is is exponential in other type of data, right? So your model, since it's a minority data, you just fit this, right? So if you look maybe at the errors by itself, it's like, see like, oh, you see, there's some types that there is kind of large, but it's fine. But then, and you look 
by the groups, you see that oh, for the majority group, like oh, the error is almost the best. Like we can imagine that. Yeah. But for exactly. other groups, like oh, it's undershooting by a lot the the value. So it's I think that was really interesting to me, like uh, because we can also the the, ana the analysis of the model, right? You can do something uh, regarding that, right? Of course, then we need to understand uh, the data, right? So which type of data do you have? But yeah, I think it's that that was really uh, interesting when I was reading the the the, the, the paper. Yeah, they they didn't uh, again. They didn't come up with exactly anything new. But okay, mm -hmm. with this problem, maybe statistically saying is better to do that and that. And so I think that is something that I really appreciate from the paper uh, as well. I think Gabriel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I just wanted uh, to add something on top of what Matheus was saying. Uh, is that uh, we when we are building our models, uh, our metrics. Uh, don't know how the world works. It's like you got it right or you got it wrong. So life expectancy for uh, different social classes will be different. Uh, different countries uh, will be different. So we are uh, rewarding the model uh, wrong, <laughs> if, we, if we can say it like that. And I think that uh, one topic or at least one perspective that we can think about is uh, how can we model uh, our algorithms in order to change the world and not just only reproduce the world as it is, because as it is, it's problematic. Uh, but what we are doing is like reproducing, reproducing and reproducing and the model. Uh, so Mateo said that the model isn't inherently uh, uh, perpetuating prejudice. Uh, and I agree, but uh, we are also not thinking about how the model can change the world instead of just replicating it. So, mm. yeah. And for me, that's the difference uh, of like saying that intelli uh, artificial intelligence has a conscious uh, consciousness, like in ChatGPT, that people say, ah, it's, it has its own consciousness and it's intelligent. And no, it's just replicating something uh, in a very complex manner. And it's it's not changing the world. Uh, uh, well. So yeah, just wanted to add this perspective to the problem. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that point of, of Gibraltar is very important because I, I don't know exactly the year. I think it, uh, they are from like two years ago from, from Nambo in Europe, for example, on the, the, the top, uh, the top uh, events on machine learning in the world. Um, they start to they, they created this uh, social impact statement. So every paper that is submitted to Europe, they need to write a, a paper saying, "Hey, uh, what is the positive and negative social impacts of your paper of your of your proposition?" So, so they say, "Oh, my, my paper is good because tackle this problem is problem, but maybe uh, this problem that is a better side of my model, and so on and so on and so on." So for oh, maybe my model is like. Uh, would have a, a high level of discrimination because these are so they need to to talk about the social impacts of, of the model of, of, of the papers right now. So that is again that is something that that is evolving in the computer science and machine learning general communities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think another thing is that like uh, regarding also the models the Gabriel just said also I think it's very interesting, but also like there's some data that we don't have right we don't we don't uh, you we don't have like some labels right it's kind of like uh, what I think it's like it's really challenging right because it's not just race it's not just uh, social it's a it's a whole. Uh, a set of things right that uh most of the time we go we consider that oh okay it's the noise right oh the guy has his life and, and you know all the things uh it's really hard for us to have some feature to try to measure that uh but but yeah right for us like uh if you think about our oh, race i don't know if you wanted to use that in some way right how do you get this data right is, is some things that uh of course I, just giving a very Example, uh, not saying that uh, uh, doing that, right? Uh, but it's like uh, some data that for uh, is kind of high, right? For for the paper, right? Race, for instance, like it's simpler, right? Because it's, it's a medical environment, so you you, you know it's easier. But uh, like 
is also this thing, right? There are a lot of data points that uh, uh, features that we don't have, right? So, but I think also, uh, I think maybe it would be interesting for us to think as well, like the point of Gabriel, right? How can we improve, like in some way, right? Because yeah. now the the impact of the the I think social impact when people think now, like at least for this year, uh, the first half of this year is like oh the impact of GPT and stuff like that. Oh, it's like the paper that Samuel discussed, right? All oh, the impact of work on GPT stuff. Uh, but uh, I don't know, like uh, the, the the which things that you could, and, and not talking about LLMs, right? I'm just saying that because of the hype that we're having right now. But uh, yeah, how how could we? Uh, and, and GPT, or, well, GPT was created by OpenAI when Musk and the other guys found that OpenAI was just because of that to, to tackle um, our societal problems, our societal daily, uh, daily lives problems with ethical, ethical like machine learning. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it, right? They started that and then they see like, all oh, this product can generate a lot of money. And they say, oh, okay, AI is okay. very dangerous, okay. guys. So let exactly. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, but then it was the, the, the main problem, the, the main problem yeah. about yeah. being our initial existence. Yeah, that's a good point. Okay. But yeah, interesting. Uh, any other comments, guys? Questions? I think Lucas, if you could share later the, the your presentation and stuff like that in the links, I think that would be really interesting. Because mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's hard, right, <laughs> to think about it, but it's something that it maybe it's good to to have in mind, right, with this biases right especially that we have our, our our models right so you think like a bank in general have credit models have uh stuff like that and and i remember like when apple released their credit card right they have like the guy saying oh i have i don't know a thousand dollars limit mm -hmm. here and my wife that has the same job that has the same salary and she has like fifty dollars limit right so it's a lot of things that uh you know like you, you imagine like oh this should be similar by right? all the data should be similar but somehow there's something that uh, just get like uh, some difference that are unexpected right mm, but yeah uh, okay i think so any more questions guys or or this is it